Let's talk about Louisiana age verification laws. Uh, Let's some background talk about here. those. Two states, Utah and Louisiana, have passed recent laws requiring uh, pornographic websites to verify user age via government ID. Okay, Porn I'm gonna let you finish, but the Louisiana law that sounds like a terrible idea. Okay, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Totally. I'm sorry. Let's keep uh, going. Government ID age verification. Let's go. Pornhub complied with the Louisiana law, which uses a state-run system, oh boy, uh, for digitized identity confirmation, but blocked the entire state of Utah because Utah has no such system. Uh, Virginia, Mississippi, and Arkansas are all considering similar laws. According to Pornhub, it was one of the few adult sites in Louisiana, well, okay, on the internet, I guess, um, that complied with the law. Consequently, uh, it saw an 80% drop in traffic in the state, while some of this loss is driven by increased VPN usage, which we know for a fact, um, because there were, right around when this happened, there was a chart of popular Google searches um, by, uh, by geography, yeah. and the state of Louisiana was like hard, like by far the, the biggest spike was for VPN. So that's definitely a thing that happened. Um, it is also saying that it is likely that a large percentage of users simply switch to sites that haven't complied. And I also agree that that is true because you're going to have a bunch of people that aren't really that into tech that probably have no idea what a VPN is um, and that also don't want to like hand over their government ID, which both of those things sound very likely and very true. Uh, earlier this week, Louisiana passed additional penalties for websites out of compliance, including up to $5,000 every day in potential fines. Uh, in quotes, this makes the internet more unsafe, Pornhub argues, by shuffling users away from sites that safely measures its place to with safety dark measures of the web. <laughs> with safety measures in place. Cool. Um, Pornhub reported that Louisiana users have already experienced identity theft as a result of the age verification law there. Also not surprised because there's probably honeypot sites. Now, hold uh, on. Before you say advocated... the last part, let's talk about mm. what Pornhub is right about. And they are definitely right that submitting your government ID online to some random patchwork of verification systems because... Man, let me tell you, if U.S. tax code is anything to go by, this is going to be an absolute shit show. It's going to be a disaster. Um, also, hey, Luke, do you remember that time? I forget what state it was, but didn't they basically just have some kind of um, like credentials available on the site or something like that? Or like the roster of all of their their workers in like uh, inspect element or something like that. It was, it was like the password to be able to access the, like uh, the like user database for a government website was stored in, in HTML or something. It was something crazy like that. And then when a reporter talked about it, um, they, they brought him to court for hacking because he pressed F12 and read something, Yeah, uh, which was, that was amazing. There's also like, if I remember correctly in Australia, their like passport database or something leaked like this, this stuff just because it's like oh there's a government system that verifies the id like that's not that's not better um it was social security numbers for teachers um and it wow. was censored visually yeah. but if you did inspect element it was totally visible yeah so why would you even censor it why would it even be there it's so stupid <laughs> <laughs> oh but these are these are the kinds of these are the kinds of people that you are going to be entrusting your government issued ID to. Um, they're right. They're right that submitting your your ID and I mean, oh man, that is even that is even aside from just the ideological angle that you can attack this from. So a no, you shouldn't be submitting your government ID online to a database where it probably will be leaked. That's number yeah. one. And and Someday. I'm not yeah. saying the solution is to have websites maintain this because that's even worse. No. You don't want every random what I'm gonna I'm gonna send my ID to every like random porno pornography site 
Sure, because the porn industry has a really great reputation for, you know, only engaging in business in the most up and up way. So, so, so sure, that sounds like a great idea. Um, but regardless of where I'm sending it, that is an awful, awful idea. And they are, they are right that this actually does make Internet users largely less safe. Yes. You know what I, I am. Or, you know what I am. I am going to go at it from the ideological standpoint as well. I couldn't help noticing that these are mostly right-leaning states. Isn't is this a small government thing to do? Is, is that not part of this conversation? I uh, I'm having a I'm having. I was going to say like what what do you think what do you think an alternative solution could be that still approaches. Because it doesn't seem it doesn't seem like they're trying to. Yeah, no, I guess they sort of are. Like if if there's if there's laws already in place that you aren't supposed to be able to access this stuff unless you're a certain age. Um, in 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 I'm going to put in quotes here. In improving uh, their ability to enforce those laws, um, kind of potentially might make sense. Um, sure, but like it's. But this is just a terrible way of going about it. What What do you think about? I've been sitting here trying to think about alternative ideas. What do you think about if they had like a a block list that parents could? If they had a block list and instructions on how to set it up, um, that parents could run at home or something like. Do you think that would? Providing it? resources is fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but the whole idea with small government is that you're not supposed to just, you know, step in and make decisions on behalf of people. Um, that's like the whole the whole idea. It's not supposed to be a nanny state, and this is one thousand percent nanny state. This, like, this is modern. This net is nanny, net so nanny literally. state. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like like literally. If they if they gave residents, um, you know, the uh, a, a resource that was like, hey, uh, you know, all you have to do is contact your ISP, and you can request, you know, the to pie hole, you know, every possible source of pornography, and you can report a new one here. Even that is a lot more regulation than some people um, would want. Like that's a, a lot more interference in, you know, a free and open marketplace or, you know, whatever, whatever it is, but it's certainly a lighter touch. This is a, this is heavy handed. This is, this is, here's how we're doing it. And if you don't comply, we're going to fine you $5,000 a day. Also, our system is stupid. Um, and, and it's just, it's one of those things where. I don't think it's exclusive to right-leaning or left-leaning politicians. I think that every politician almost across the board seems to fundamentally understand how te or misunderstand how tech works. This is and not... The vast majority of them are, are actual dinosaurs. This is not how tech works. You can't just... Yeah. Some, some rando website based in China or based somewhere in Eastern Europe or whatever what you're going to send them a bill for five thousand dollars a day they're just going to not pay it and then that's it yeah that's actually the, that's actually the end of that entire interaction so all you're doing and this is this is a valid argument from Pornhub all you're doing is you are penalizing you're you're putting at a disadvantage the the websites that are willing to work with you on regulation by enforcing regulation that is stupid and doesn't make any sense so great, you you have successfully even further deregulated the pornographic material that your your citizens still definitely have access to. Absolutely wild. <laughs> just... and, and, and the thing that's crazy to me is it's it's not like they're imposing this on Twitter. Yeah, it's not like they're imposing this on Reddit. It is. It's not like they're imposing this on okay. anything else. Twitter has gotten. I swear to you. I know this is anecdotal. But Twitter has gotten even worse to the point where I, I, I can't click on anything that's trending and scroll more than maybe like five or six tweets before I will almost yeah. certainly find hardcore pornography. It's unbelievable. Yeah.
And so I, like, what, do you need that age verification for, for Twitter now? I don't know. It seems weird. I don't know, man. Yes. Oh, man. Oh, there's some yeah. shockingly bad takes in the chat. Uh, oh, man. That's, oh, wow. Okay. Anyway. Um, yeah. However, I had cut you off before you finished going through the notes on this. And the reason for that was that I wanted to talk about what I agree with Pornhub about first. But it's also necessary for us to talk about the ways that I don't agree with Pornhub. Their solution is device-based age verification rather than requiring users to submit their ID when they access an adult site. That is stupid um, and obviously not going to work. Device-based age verification would be, oh man, possible. It would be possible but they would need major buy-in from, I mean, who? Apple, Google, Microsoft. Uh, we, would have to, we would have to move into a world where, uh, I mean, I guess they'd probably need Firefox on board, Brave, while we're at it. And there's no way Brave's going to support any kind of anything to do with any of this, I suspect. Um, they, they would need so many entities on board because... They're proposing device-based, which is obviously asinine because the second I hand my kids my phone to follow some origami tutorial, oh good, they're now verified for Pornhub. That was definitely that good system, right? Um, but I could see if it was actually built into something like biometric verification. So you go to this website and you just tap your fingerprint sensor or something like that. I could see that working. Windows, that's, hello. that's not device-based, though. That's biometric authentication. And then all of a sudden, okay, who's responsible for storing those credentials and validating them in the first place? Okay, well, now we're back to the same bloody problem because it all has to be in a central database. So their device-based authentication is... Uh, what, what, what's the word for that? A red herring? Um, I'm, I'm going to have straw man. I, I, so. I can't remember. It's a something. Not a straw man. No, it's a red herring. Something that misleads or distracts <clears throat> from the relevant or important question, I guess. Or that's not quite a red herring either, actually. Basically, it's a distraction. It's, just not it's a, a smokescreen. There, yeah. that's what I was looking yeah. for. They're basically going, don't do this because it negatively impacts our business. It comes back to what we were talking about earlier, where, you know what? Maybe they do actually care about a safer internet. Realistically, what they probably care about is running their businesses in a competitive manner and the fact that because they are not based in, you know, the Middle East somewhere, actually Middle East would probably not be a good place to be based if you're running a porn site, but Eastern Europe somewhere, because they're not based in Eastern Europe somewhere, they actually may be subject to paying these fines, which is the real reason that they're complying with these new standards and these new verification policies. And they just don't want to do it because it puts them at a competitive disadvantage. That's, that's the real reason. And then they're proposing solutions that I think they ultimately know aren't going to work to just delay the implementation of anything because at the end of the day, nothing is going to work. In the same way that they were uh, yeah, never the, able to keep Playboy magazines out of the hands of horny teenagers in the woods or whatever, right? Like, that, that's what I was just going to say. Is like if if you if you are someone who is uh, very much in support of restricting access to these types of things, I think the thing that you need to understand about this particular situation is that it it didn't even sort of work. Um, <laughs> like you, users either just VPN. Um, or they just used a different website, and that is always going to be a thing. Um, so, like, it, it's it's just it's just a bad solution because it it leaves the people that are using it in a very sketchy situation of having their government IDs leaked. Um, and not to, not if to they mention that don't but go that route. Remember, if this user list leaks, you're going to be verified as someone who visited a pornographic website, which. You know what? I, I don't care. Your SO might, you know, maybe your employer is like, you know, 
hardcore anti-pornography, maybe they fire you. Should they really be, should that be any of their business? Like if we want to, I, I, it might be a conversation you want to have with your SO if that's something you're hiding from your SO, but your your employer, yeah, I don't know. That's probably not a conversation you I want just, to have with your boss. Look, and there's no reason why they should ever need to know. I just mean in general. Like I think, okay, Luke, I think you and I both are are pretty open in terms of communication with our SOs, but even you and I, I don't think agree on everything. And I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into details, but there are lots of things that some for some couples are totally normal and something that they talk about very openly and for other couples are things that they simply don't talk about you know like for some people um the idea of spending yeah, any I money know. or having a savings account that their so doesn't know about is ridiculous like like to the point where that would be is essentially financial cheating whereas other other couples literally have a have a relationship policy where they don't talk about finances with each other there's a broad spectrum and i'm not i'm not judging right now that's not the point of any of this the point of this is that a database of people who accessed porn leaking could have serious negative ramifications for people that are avoidable and unnecessary and that are people's personal choice sort of how they want to manage their communication around it okay that's all i'm trying especially to say especially because like like uh the hub um is is quite general but there's a lot of sites that aren't general sure right yeah so what if what if something about certain preferences that you may have comes out um that you you aren't yeah. exactly ready to say you're in the closet communicate. and you're not ready to talk about that yet we might as well just say it luke right i mean we're yeah i i don't know if this i don't know if this episode even necessarily qualifies as appropriate for general audiences anymore with how much we're talking about this stuff but i mean i gotta be honest yeah. with you i have pretty much just accepted that when and if my kids get curious about this stuff there's nothing i can do to prevent them from accessing it so we're just going to yeah. have to have frank conversations about it. You know, hey, you know, that's, you know, that's not, that's not real. That's not how that actually works. Um, you know, these are I, I think uh, this, this is no longer really a tech conversation, but I think that point right there is like the most important part of the whole thing. Like, don't, please, God, do not go into any of this stuff in real life with an expectation that it should be anything even remotely like what you just viewed.